realised it's nearly three o'clock and I haven't actually recorded anything for today. Uh, so this morning I woke up, I was going through a Zoom call with, was it Zoom or was it, well I don't remember, but anyway I was going through with a friend of mine to iron out technical issues for a presentation, a live presentation we're giving at three o'clock this afternoon via Zoom um, and then at 12.30 I did a patrol phone call with the girls who were due to be going to Poland in the summer and well, I've just done a dry run for the phone call that we're doing at three o'clock so I've now got about 10 or 15 minutes before we're doing the three o'clock phone call for real well I say phone call it's it's a light it's a zoom meeting that we're doing as a live broadcast to people um, the cat has popped in to say hello, which isn't surprising because it's really horrible weather outside. It was a bit grey earlier than it was hail. Um, it's been bucketing it down with rain earlier. My husband's been out for shopping um, for fruit and vegetables and things to have with dinner this evening. So today has been busy. It's been fun busy, not stressful, bad busy, but it has been busy. Um, Yesterday, when I went into town to do some shopping and delivering some cards, it was really very weird that normally on a, a Saturday night you'd have um, groups of young men and young women drunkenly screeching up and down the high street, scantily clad in some cases. That wasn't happening. All of the bars were dead. The um, clubs were dead. It was just really, really weird. Um, there was something else yesterday I observed or just wanted to discuss but I can't remember for the life of me what it was. Um, but anyway, that's the day so far. Yeah, like I said, I've only got about 10, 15 minutes when so I need to brush my teeth, get a drink, go to the loo, whatever. Um, maybe put a bit of makeup on. Um, and then after we've done that, there's other bits and pieces I also need to do uh, to wind up this virtual briefing weekend we've been doing for the participants for the European Jamboree this summer. But... Yeah, nowhere near as stressful as yesterday. Busy, but yeah, nowhere near as stressful. Also, say hello to... Hello to Boddington. Yeah, when I did my patrol call earlier today, um, I was going to set them a scavenger hunt. So, so they had the choice of doing a scavenger hunt or a, a two truths and a lie game. And they chose the two truths and a lie game. Um, but one of the things I was going to ask them for on the scavenger hunt was the oldest piece of clothing that they own. And my contribution to that was going to be this that I'm wearing now is my guide uniform from when I was... 12, 13 years old, which still sort of fits me. Admittedly, it's a little bit sweater girl, but it does still fit. And um, when I first started, the uniform was the blue blouse, neckerchief, blue skirt, pockets in the neckerchief, very prescriptive, pockets in the neckerchief, pockets in the blouse, very prescriptive where all of the badges went. So your interest badges went down one side and your service badges were somewhere else. And your service flash, if you had it, was on the cuff. And then your promise badge and possibly your world badge and your Tefl badge were wherever. No, I think they were that side. Oh, I don't remember. Anyway, that was that. And then in the early 90s, um, Jeff, I can't remember his name now. That's really going to annoy me. I remembered it earlier. But yeah, the, some big famous designer at the time came along and redesigned the whole guide uniform to something that was more practical something that was mix and match um, we had jogging bottoms t-shirts hoodies sweatshirts um that were supposed to be a lot more practical jeff banks that's it that's who it is and at the time it kind of caused a bit of a consternation around well this isn't what guiding is supposed to be looking this is not what our uniform is supposed to be looking like um, but it's still the model that we have now of having stuff that's more practical and more everyday wear um, rather than smart, formal and a lot more practical for doing some of the stuff we do. So yeah, time to move on. But this, this doesn't, this is still with me.
day. So again, I can't remember what I did or didn't say earlier, but back in January, we had a wide game for all of the people who are going to the Jamboree. It was across zones one and two of London. The idea was that they worked in their patrols. They got to know each other. They got to do things that would be um, useful for being on the Jamboree. So going through planning what they wanted to do, deciding what activities they did or didn't want to do, um, resolving any conflict within their patrol, etc, etc. And we were going to give the results for the London Day Wide Game at the briefing weekend. But because we don't have a face to face briefing weekend, we've just done it via Zoom online um, with all of the girls watching and sort of following along with the presentation. And it went really well. And I'm quite relieved it went really well because there were technological problems earlier on when we were trying to do the dry run and the practice. And I was really, really worried that technology was going to let us down big time, but it didn't. And that's go technology. Um, so lots of lots of the girls were saying how that they enjoyed what they did that they had a really good day that they got to know people in the group a lot better somebody asked if we could do it again just give me a couple of months to recover from from the planning of this one um what else i'm trying to trying to remember what other things that that, that were said on the on the on the call um but also a little bit of reflection on the whole covid19 situation and hopes that people will come out of it kinder and more caring and supportive of each other and um one of the leaders said how grateful she was it's actually made her realize how grateful she is for the things that she does have um so yes a little bit of reflection and then basically it descended into to everybody sharing photographs or videos of their dogs and cats um, and the cat that's come to visit us, whose name we don't know, also made an appearance um, and has now left hair all over my uniform top. Um, but as we don't have any face to face meetings, I'm not going to be using my uniform top for a while. So it doesn't matter. A little bit of sticky tape. We can get it all sorted out. So I've now got about an hour and a quarter um, before there's another patrol phone call. So again, as a safeguarding thing, when you have contact with girls, you should never be in a one-on-one -on -one situation unless it's completely unavoidable. So for things like personal care, first aid, sometimes it just has to be one adult with one girl. Um, but for everything else, it should be at least two adults with the girls. Um, to protect the girls, protect adults. So as part of that for our online patrol discussions, we have two adults. Um, so I've been the main adult for my first call and now I'm being the second adult for a friend of mine. Um, so yeah, I've got an hour and a quarter, maybe get a cup of tea, have some cake, go and wash my hands because we can't wash our hands enough in this current situation. Um, I get changed out of my uniform, which literally means taking off my hoodie top. And um, yes, getting prepped for my final Zoom call of the day. Yay! Go Sunday! realised how old and tired I look. However, it's fair to say that Saturday, no, Sunday, because today is Sunday, Sunday was far better than Saturday. I did try talking to my phone earlier, but my phone decided to cut off mid, mid conversation because there wasn't enough space, apparently, because it does that sometimes. Um, but what I was saying is earlier I'd finished the third call for the day where I was the second adult for a friend of mine and she was playing the game Two Truths and a Lie with her patrol. So as the name suggests, you say three things, two of them are true, one of them is a lie and people have to guess which one the lie is. And generally I was rubbish at it. So we were playing Two Truths and a Lie 
and my friend who comes from Australia said her three things were she had a sister, she comes from New Zealand and she does ice hockey. And the girls were saying, oh, but she's got an accent, so maybe you can tell from the accent. And I sort of said, oh, no, yeah, well, Australia and New Zealand pretty much have the same accent, so you wouldn't be able to tell from the accent. Knowing full well that was a lie. Um, so when when we came to the end of the game, they she was like, well, the lie is such and such. And I, she was like, the lie is that I come from New Zealand and we don't have the same accents. So, yeah, she's from Australia, from Queensland. But it was really good fun winding her up. I felt very mean. No, I didn't. I lie. <laughs> I should have felt very mean, but I didn't feel the least bit mean um, in in winding her up like that. But I, I, whilst the girls were debating amongst themselves which one was the lie, I had to bite my tongue really, really hard not to laugh. Um, so, yeah, that was that was a fun point of today. Um, and then this evening, after after all the phone calls were over, or I say the phone calls, the video calls, the Zoom calls, um, my husband and I had burger and chips and salad for dinner with gin, and we watched Lady Bird, which I've heard, as a, you know, people have said to me it's a good film. I had it in my Netflix queue, and we watched it, and it is a really good film. It's brilliant. It's very subtle. I think um, I would be interested in hearing the Mark Kermode review of it. It's in some ways very un-American because it's not big and brash and full of special effects. It's kind of gentle and slow and subtle, subtle humour and subtle comedy. Um, and I laughed my head off at the sports coach trying to direct production of The Tempest the same way he would um, train train the footballers. Sort of with a blackboard and you stand here and you do this and you do that. That was hysterical. And the scene at the prom had me in bits. I'm not gonna not gonna give any more spoilers. Not gonna give well not gonna give any spoilers, I hope. But those were, those were kind of like the highlights of the film. But yeah, definitely, definitely worth watching. I would, may even watch it again. I don't know. There's so much other stuff to watch. Um, oh yes, on that note, I've, I was playing a game on my phone earlier which had adverts, and it was giving me adverts for In and Vida, which is a Swedish, uh, show. So I've seen the first season of that, or first series as we call it in the UK. I've seen the first series of that, but I haven't seen the second series of that. Um, but the, the basic plot is there's this lady who is a police officer who is trying to infiltrate a family, a crime family. And she then finds out that her son has integrated himself with the family to try and act as a mong, um, so that he can impress his mum, the police officer. And... As you may expect, the the family, the crime family, find out, and it all goes, or has, yeah, it goes very wrong. Oh, yeah, what's my house doing? Um, so yeah, the second series of that is available on more four, I think. So I need to go and watch that. Well, I don't need to go and watch that, but I want to go and watch that. I've also got Stockholm Requiem waiting to be watched. And there's another one as well, um, but because they're all with subtitles, if I'm going to do knitting, I need to make sure it's really simple knitting so I can actually get all of the subtitles. Um, so yeah, that was Sunday. And as things go, tomorrow is Monday. So I'll see you then.